All right, guys, Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com, InfinityCustomWorks.com, and Gary Dean Detailing. So, if you've been watching my videos or following what I've been doing lately, uh, you will find that I've been in the shop. Let me show you this place. It's looking all kinds of not good. It's in uh, incredible disarray because I've been trying to eliminate moisture in my bigger compressor setup. Now, specifically talking about VersaCoat 13, if you're looking to spray VersaCoat 13, you can absolutely make a small compressor work. You can either get this one um, from Northern Tool, which is a really good unit. It's small, portable, and, and very powerful. It's a great unit for spraying VersaCoat. Um, Harbor Freight also has the McGraw, I think the 29 gallon. Uh, that one, I think does eight CFM. This does 7.8, I believe, uh, at 90. So when you're using the R500, which is this guy here, um, the R500 is a low volume, no, low pressure sprayer. And with this compressor or the McGraw from Home Depot, or I'm sorry, from Harbor Freight, uh, and the R500, those two work very well together to spray VersaCoat 13 like a professional would. But in my shop, I needed another level of awesome. And so I built what some would call kind of an extreme moisture filtration system. But I'm gonna run you through my setup and what I did. I literally just finished it. So let's start from the beginning. I found this Campbell Hossfield compressor on Facebook Marketplace. I got a good deal on it. I wasn't sure if it ran. It totally does. I have literally redone all the fittings and everything on this thing. So everything pretty much, all the seals basically are all brand new and some of the fittings. So let's talk about what I did. The uh, drain cock that's down here, I just replaced that with an actual um, ball valve. So that's awesome, love that. No leak there, it was leaking, so I replaced it. Um, I did go to Northern Tool and get the correct situation. I don't prefer these. Um, I actually prefer the ball valve, it's just easier to deal with. Um, so that was replaced. So basically what I built here is a afterburner situation for the compressor. So basically as the pump creates the compressed air, let me turn this fan off. Okay, so as that pump creates the compressed air, it now, it, okay, so let's back up. When I got this and when you buy a compressor, the copper hose goes from the pump straight into the tank. There is a pressure fitting in there, which I did replace, uh, that big brass one on the bottom of the copper. So that's been replaced. That basically tells the unit to stop pressurizing at 125 PSI, which you can see that's where we're at right now. So we're loaded down, the lines are um, charged. The only thing I have to do left is to bolt down the compressor and I kind of had to move it around and that kind of thing. It's not gonna move from where it's at. Really it can't because of all this. So what I did was, what a bitch to figure out all these fittings and everything and make it all work and all of that. But it is functional and really does a great job. So what this does is it, it disconnects the pump from the tank and basically I ran copper pipe, half inch, all the way up to a, basically a car transmission cooler radiator deal. So this pipe comes along up and into that radiator and not only does that radiator um, cool the air down, but I've got that 12 volt fan on there as well, which you can see I've just kind of got it rigged up to a uh, 12 volt uh, switching power. So this uh, converts uh, AC to DC power so that you can actually run a 12 volt piece of equipment. So that's how I've got the fan running right now. I might have, 
I might actually tidy it all up and put it on a switch, but right now I've got just a car cigarette lighter plug rigged up to the wiring. You can see the connections back there. Uh, and then it's plugged into this guy and plugged into the outlet. So the fan functions, it works great. So you got the copper going into that radiator, going in, it's getting cooled down, and then that air comes back out about 23 degrees cooler than it went in. Um, I have been using my, where'd it go? I have a temperature gun somewhere. I don't know where it went, but I've been messing with that thing. Goodness, I don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. I have this uh, Harbor Freight temp gun, infrared thermometer. And uh, I was able to measure about 23 degrees difference between, and I could let some air out and show it to you, but just trust me, it's 23 degrees difference between the inlet and the outlet. So it goes into the radiator, goes in, the fan and the, the fins cool it, and the copper that's in there cools, and it comes back out, and it goes into this moisture trap, which you'll see absolutely has some moisture in it. Well, maybe it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> Good. I just let it all out before I started the video. Um, this pipe is noticeably hotter than this pipe, especially if you go up here, touch it, very hot. This, not so much. Um, so anyway, it comes out into a moisture trap to catch whatever moisture it can before that air gets put into the tank. So then it goes into the tank and it comes out here. I've got a three quarter ball valve that was on it when I got it. So I just adapted it down uh, to work with the half inch. So it comes out. So that's the afterburner setup. So that's to cool the air and reduce moisture before it even gets in the tank. Then moving on, I built this moisture trap situation to dry and cool the air after the tank. So this comes out into half inch. Up, moisture trap. So that catches some moisture there. We go along the line and then we go up and down and up and down and up and down. So we've got four moisture traps there that I can release. Doesn't seem to be any, be any moisture there, so that's good. So it goes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up into another regulator. Well, this is a trap and a regulator. No moisture there, good deal. Um, this allows me to adjust the pressure uh, right here at the end of the line. And so I've got a gauge there and I have this regulator set at 80 PSI. So that one gives me 125 right there at that, well, the gauge is up there, but it would give me the same pressure reading right there where the ball valve is. So that gives me 125 there. I've got it uh, turned down to about 80 right here because when I spray that and VersaCoat 13, I use about, I, I spray about 28, 29, 30, right in there PSI for VersaCoat 13. So with that said, I can keep the regular at the gun at 28 to 30 PSI and this won't fall below 80. So that's kind of where that works. I had to basically extend this out from the wall a little bit. As you see, I've got it mounted to the wall. Um, I could have put some wood there and all of that. It didn't matter. This is concrete. So cinder blocks actually are good for basically keeping the cool in, uh, which is why they use them on the first floor of all Florida homes that are built. So anyway, we got half inch pipe coming out of this uh, moisture trap and regulator. Um, and then I just put in a ball valve. I had a leak right here, but I put this ball, ball valve in uh, so that I can turn off the pressure right here if I want to. So turn it completely off at the guns. So that's what's at the end of my line there is a uh, ball valve. So this is a motor guard. I think it was the M100 kit, but this is the M60. It's basically got a roll of toilet paper in it. This is the filter. Um, the kit actually comes with three filters. Yeah, so one is in it and it's got two other ones, but this is the, the kit that I bought. This is the M100 kit. So it's got two spare filters, but this is the last defense against um, moisture, if you will. 
I've got it mounted up and it's really strong here, so it's not wobbling or nothing's weird. The only thing, like I said, I've still got to bolt the compressor down, which is no big deal. Got to drill a couple holes and put three bolts in, good to go. And then as you come down, uh, I have uh, it reduced here from half to a quarter inch and I've got this T. I've got high flow Flexzilla fittings on it. So basically I've got one fitting for my hose reel and you don't want to spray VersaCote 13 with a hose reel. You want to use, well this right here is a 3 8 inch um, 35 foot hose. That's actually what I spray with, with that compressor. Um, and I have this bottom one just for spraying VersaCote 13. This will be for all the other tools in the shop and for airing tires up and that kind of thing. But for VersaCote 13, I'll hook this guy right here, right up to there, and we're charged now. I can actually hook up the gun and spray if I want to, just like so. And she stays at 30 PSI all day long, my friends with no moisture. The other line of defense is having a moisture trap on your gun, and I usually put that below the regulator because you want to regulate better than it will if this was on the bottom. I, th I feel like this actually performs better right at the gun, the regulator. Um, so I got a moisture trap here, and right before the line, right here, has this moisture trap, I got this one, and then there's four there, that one, and then the one before it comes in. So if we get moisture now, the only thing I can really do is to add a refrigerated air dryer. Now, before you guys start putting comments in and asking me, why did you not just go buy an air dryer from the get-go when it's one piece of equipment instead of all the work that you had to do to solder all this pipe together? I've got, so I want to say this was about $80, 80 or 90 bucks. I got fittings, these ball valves. I got one, two, three, four, five ball valves there. Uh, this is double half inch thread. Those are uh, solder on ball valves. So those I think were $10 each. This was 13. I just picked this up today. Um, I got, I mean, you. I've got about, if I had to guess, I got about 500 bucks in this system. The radiator was 70, the fan was 20. Um, the two fittings coming off the radiator were $8 a piece. I mean, it, it definitely is a bunch of nickel and then diamond for sure. Um, these moisture traps were, I think, $38 a piece. So there's two of those. That one, I wanna say was like $47, and that one was about 80 or 90 bucks. So. Um, as we go through all of that, I probably have $250 in copper pipe and fittings. So we're looking at around 500, maybe 550 bucks. A good quality, like an Ingersoll Rand uh, refrigerated air dryer would run me about 1200 bucks plus tax. So I'm not only in this for far less than I would with an actual refrigerated dryer. This also looks pretty cool. I mean, I've had people already show up at the shop and be like, wow, that's super awesome. I think it looks nice. Uh, I could absolutely go polish all of that copper and make it look even better. Um, it will tarnish. I'm not real worried about it. In fact, I could probably spray some VersaCoat 13 on it and it will stop the oxidation. So that's my setup, guys. That's my setup. And I, I would give you an itemized list of what I used. The problem is your orientation and your setup and your fitting sizes and all of that will most likely be different than mine. So it doesn't really make any sense to basically tell you what's going on as far as how many elbows and how many, um, you know, all of it won't matter because your setup will be very different than mine. Um, a lot of moisture traps end up looking like this. Some guys on YouTube use three quarter inch piping. I'm using half inch because that's what all my fittings are. So um, half inch on the inlet and outlet. I actually, I'm gonna 
build another situation for that one. Uh, the, the reason that I did all of this was because I kept this moisture trap in here is too small and would fill up. Um, it just get, gets so hot and humid and I wanted no moisture in my line because it will negatively affect your spray for sure. So anyway, I've got these half inch fittings that are solder on. These actually worked out perfect. But my point is I got all, everything has half inch. So um, I'm literally, there's no bottleneck at all with the half inch anywhere here, nowhere here, all the way through. The only thing that reduces down is right at the, the outlet and we got a quarter inch. So we go from half all the way, so all the way from the tank, all the way through the afterburner, or I'm sorry, all the way from the pump through the afterburner, into the tank, out of the tank, and all the way down to this motor guard is half inch, and it's reduced right there at a quarter. So I got this Giraffe Tools um, hose reel. I have not used it yet, but should should work out fine. It's a 50 footer by half inch uh, inner diameter, and this is 50, uh, 35 foot, um, which is the if you look at different painters on YouTube, they prefer a 35 foot spray hose over a 50 foot or a hose reel. So this is the ideal setup and it looks like I don't have any moisture in my line. So I'm very happy with that. Everything cleaned up here and head out for the day. Uh, or I should say for the weekend because today's Friday. Thanks so much for watching these videos and uh, listening to me babble, if you will. And uh, see how nasty my shop is right now. I've been working on this for literally eight days. It took me a while to get it all straight, but it's all, I have no leaks now and everything is 100% functional. Literally the last thing I have to do is bolt down the compressor, which I will most likely do sometime in the near future. So thanks for watching. If you got questions for me, 813-846-4406 is myself. And uh, that's a pretty advanced moisture dryer filtration thing for my compressor. So if you guys are into this thing or you want me to help you build one, just reach out. Uh, check out Gary Dean's Detail Juice Nation. It's a group on Facebook where we talk about only my products, my processes, and what I got going on. Also, there is a group for VersaCote 13. Uh, so search VersaCote 13 if you're interested in that product and find the group, send us a request. I'll get you in there learning about that. Uh, if you have questions about VersaCote 13, please reach out. Um, we are shipping that product daily all over the world. It is awesome. Um, I will have more content on sprays that I'm doing. I've got three jobs lined up in the next uh, week and a half. And I will be posting more jobs that I complete with VersaCode 13. And like I said, if I can help you reach out, but check out detailjuice.com for all your product needs. And uh, big things are coming. I've got so much, so much to tell you about Detail Juice and what's going on and how the future is looking and all the things uh, but you better bet your ass it's looking good. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching, guys.